Greetings, my friends. I hope I find you well. This is Melus in Jalambi from Melvi Broadcasting Network. Quick advert. Welcome to Melvi Broadcasting Network, a divine voice out of Africa. This is your virtual home for quality gospel videos that we hope will reach you regardless of your nation, your tongue, your kindred. The hallmark of what we're trying to do here is to bring you quality videos that will really appeal to you and inspire you and transform your life because we seek to bring you nothing but the gospel truth. So remember to like, to subscribe, and to share these videos with others and be a member, support this work going forward. Thank you so much. Having said that, let me bring you to the topic I wanna to talk to you about today. Many of you have gone through trials before that have really shaken your faith. Many of you are defined by what happened to you but some of you have transitioned and you don't look like the trial where you come from because you've learned lessons, you've improved your life and you've set yourself on a new direction as revealed by God. The trial of our faith. I always tell people I coach and I support that when you see God shaking your tree, shaking your nest, prepare to fly away. You will not fall with the tree. God has created you in such a way that you will always rise up and fly. And so let's take some time to learn from the trials of faith of Mary and Joseph. We always glorify their story as if there was no pain, there was no sorrow. But let me bring you my perspective, my human perspective to what Joseph and Mary could have been going through during this season. So I want to share three key lessons. Watch this video to the end and I'll share those with you. So I went back to read this poignant narrative of Mary and Joseph, which is captured, if you read, I like the part of Matthew 1 verse 18 to 19. And I reflected on it again on the occasion of the season that is dubbed Christmas or the festive season that the world is going through right now. Or we've just passed it. I don't know what time you're watching this video. So in this passage, we witness nothing much to be merry about. Rather, we are confronted with a situation which is a concocted saga of pain, sorrow, stress. And as you go through that story, you cannot miss the fact that Mary and Joseph were trying their level best to faithfully pursue God's plan, in quotes, in, in their circumstances of life. So the tumultuous journey underscores the reality that many marriages today, just like theirs, are going through seasons and they're bearing profound revelations that are to be accomplished amongst challenging and unbearable circumstances. They have to walk by faith and not by sight while waiting on God to change their circumstances. Does that sound like you, my friend? Oh yes, Joseph was a man of justice, a just man. He was facing emotional turmoil and he was handling Mary's unexpected pregnancy, which she claimed was from God. I mean, which man would believe that? So Joseph did not buy the story. So he was contemplating a discreet separation or divorce okay, from Mary and so that she does it privately and Mary doesn't face the shame. So divorce was a reality here. But God intervened. He deployed angels to reveal the truth. This meant that this couple had to endure the reality far from the conventional joys that are associated with marriage and with the birth of a child. Theirs was a divine project. Nothing they had bargained for. Their union was sustained not by the conventional bliss and glamour and glitz, but by divine intervention. Such are some of our marriages in our days today. We are fulfilling a divine order, a revelation amidst unbearable realities. Does that sound like you, my friend? Some of marriages we have today are only standing because God, in his unfathomable grace, intervened. Joseph got a divine visitor to ensure, to assure him that this was a divine project that was underway with his wife and that Joseph to cancel his plans to divorce and take time to be with Mary and to care for this woman that he never impregnated. On the other side, Mary herself was baffled. She was puzzled. 
How could Joseph keep her? Could it be that Joseph is planning another divorce in future? So both of them had to receive divine revelation and the Spirit of God had to intervene to stop Joseph from divorcing Mary and also cause Mary to be pregnant. And that both of them had to live with this reality. That this is not what we planned, but God has taken over our relationship and has given us a mission which is bigger than us. And in the midst of all these discomforts that they were going through, getting into Bethlehem's crowded and unsanitary conditions, giving birth in a stable, which was, not, which was far from ideal. Mary had to give birth to Jesus right there, and Joseph had to assume, assume this unexpected role of a midwife, grappling with circumstances that defied social norms. The uncertainties of parenting a son of God added another level of complexity to their journey or their marriage. And not only that, my friends, but this narrative extended beyond the stable, beyond Bethlehem, as the couple had to face this looming threat from King Herod's pursuit and his army, which led them to run and be in exile in Egypt. And so Joseph's contemplations of this unexpected path mirrors the challenges that are faced by many of us today who are navigating unforeseen, unfavorable circumstances which are coming their way and they find themselves in their relationship. Now, key lessons are applicable in this and I've picked up three of them that I think apply from the marriage of Joseph and Mary. There are many others, you can leave them below, which I'm hoping will help us as we decipher this story and look at the real human side of the whole story of Joseph and Mary. Firstly, I believe that this young couple trusted in divine guidance, even in the midst of their uncertainty. Mary and Joseph's marriage exemplify the importance of trusting in divine guidance, my friends. Even when you are faced with uncertainty and unconventional circumstances, Despite the unexpected nature of Mary's pregnancy, both Joseph and Mary exhibited that unwavering faith in God's plan, choosing to follow his guidance rather than to succumb to doubt, to societal you know, expectations and suspicions. And that often, my friend, is very important even in our relationships today. Don't walk by what you hear and what you see. Sometimes things are not as they seem. You are seeing a, 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 a marriage where the child has been born in suspicious circumstances. And there are questions even as to whether he looks like Joseph or not. There are questions even as to at what point was this child conceived. Because at the point where Joseph married Mary, this boy cannot be... There were a lot of stories. And yet they trusted God to take care of their story. Point number two, they are a couple that showed resilience in the face of adversity. Their marriage definitely endured numerous challenges as I was explained above. And some of them are from societal stigma of Mary's unexpected pregnancy to the hardships of childbirth in a humble stable for a virgin and Joseph being the midwife, the couple's resilience in the face of all these adversities teaches us to value uh, staying committed to our commitments. Even when the path seems difficult, you've got to weather the storm together, showcasing that strength that comes from a shared sense of purpose and truth will keep you in all circumstances, regardless of what you go through. Point number three is, is this one is a very important one. You've got to learn as a couple to embrace the disruptions for a greater purpose. What do I mean by this? Joseph and Mary had to learn the profound lesson that they have to embrace the disruptions 
that happened in their relationship which had a greater purpose. Their initial plans for a conventional family life were disrupted and, and they recognized that God's plan was far greater than their own plans. And so the birth of Jesus, their own son, in less than ideal conditions, ultimately unfolded as part of the divine plan, plan that transcended their understanding. They didn't understand everything, but they trusted God. And this encourages us to be open to unexpected turns in our lives and that we must trust that God is leading us to a higher purpose and that only Him is able exceedingly able above all our imaginations and our thoughts to do what is always best for us. He looks beyond our current state and gives us eternity. Can you imagine that Joseph and Mary, for that short period they lived in this world, we don't know at what point they died, but in that season of their life, their prime season of life, they accepted the call of God and decided to parent this child, the son of God, who actually is also called the son of Joseph, the son of Joseph and Mary. They, they gave us that opportunity into their lives and today we know them and we read about them. And what they did back then enabled God to save the whole world. Could it be that through your marriage, God is doing something? innocuously, silently, privately in the corridors of your own relationship, God is working on a greater plan that will save this world in the long run. Because your marriage cannot just be for childbearing, just for companionship. Marriage is bigger than just childbearing, than sex, than just making money and going on holidays. Marriage is God's great idea to complete his kingdom on earth because that which is unseen which is the invisible part of the Godhead is seen in that which is created even in our marriages and so here are two questions I want to leave you to com contemplate on and see if you can make sense of this uh, reflection can you give God the privilege to continue painting a tapestry of your unraveling story under strange experiences. Can you allow him to do that? Or it is very easy for most of you to just walk away. The moment strange things begin to happen in your marriage, you walk away. Just like Joseph was about to walk away. But may God stop you in your tracks through divine revelation to show you that you need to stay with Mary. You need to stay with Joseph. You may not know, you may not understand, Joseph, that this is God's doing. It feels so wrong at many levels, but you've got to be patient. Because when you went on that altar and you said, I do, and you signed the covenant, you actually crucified yourself together with your wife or those you are related with to say, I will be available to help you. Yes, there are times when you have to walk away from people. But this lesson is saying, can you still stay even when there are strange things happening in your relationship and give God a chance to birth his project in your marriage and see it through? Can you still treat your marriage as God's mission for the master to produce the seeds for his kingdom and that, that project is bigger than you? So my friends, their unwavering trust in God in the midst of all the adversities saw them through this. And I want you to, to understand me and please trust me on this one. God is still at work in the scandals and the controversies of your marriage and your family. He has not stopped working. Despite the misery that surrounds your marriage, just like Mary and Joseph, they anchored their happiness in the higher purpose, choosing to rely wholeheartedly on divine guidance and not what people said. Their resilience serves as a compelling example for anyone who's grappling with unexpected challenges in their relationship. This is yours, my friend. In times of trouble, Joseph and Mary 
exemplify that we can embrace the disruptions to our plans and that can actually lead us to greater purposes. Tough mountain-like roads, the little trails often lead to beautiful scenes. And so may your story inspire others who are facing challenges to when they look at you, they trust that God is in action. Even when circumstances seem dire, Okay, and you're never close to what you signed up for. You still live for God so that others, when they look at your relationship, they'll say, surely God is at work in that relationship. And so I'm praying, my friends, at this moment in time that may you find freedom and recovery and the abundance of life, allowing a smile to grace your face as you navigate the complexities of your own journey in your own marriage. Let me tell you, my friend, your marriage is bigger than you because God planned it and God will foresee it. And so my call to you today is, would you surrender your relationship to God? Would you allow him in his greatness to shape your story? Would you borrow him, your marriage, so that through your marriage you can create eternal value in the lives of of your children and those whom you will influence. Joseph borrowed Jesus his grave for perhaps two nights and we know about Joseph until today. What is it that you're going to borrow to God? Today I'm calling you to a greater sacrifice which is bigger than you. In less ideal situations I'm calling you to submit your heart God, to submit your relationships to God, to submit the trial of your faith to God because he knows ultimately the purpose. He may not consult you. He didn't consult Job. But the trial of the faith of Job was for the glory of God. Could it be that God is saying, your trial, my sister, your pain, my brother, your sorrow, your betrayals, the tough things you have to deal with, they are meant for the blessing of nations. May God bless you. May you cause his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. May he be forgiving and give you peace in your heart. In Jesus' name, amen.